Hi everyone, this is Simcha Waitovich from Firefly Site. Today we have a different type of video for you. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the differences between liquid and solid state calibration standards. And in this video, I'm going to reveal an industry secret that has been kept hidden from everyone for decades. So, let's get started. Let's first take a look at liquid calibration standards. Liquid filters have been used for decades and they have become a must-have in many labs GLP, good laboratory practice. Liquid filters are also used for European pharmacopoeia and US pharmacopoeia compliance. Liquid stands are also made of different types of chemicals such as holmium perchlorate, potassium dichromate, tulane hexane, sodium nitrite, and a few others. The chemicals are placed into a 10 mm cuvette and different manufacturers have different methods for sealing the chemicals safely in the cuvettes. Liquid standards are very reliable and allow you to test for photometric accuracy, straight light, wavelength accuracy, and resolution. Throughout the years, these standards have become everyone's go-to filters. Now, there are some drawbacks to using liquid filters. The first and biggest one is the yearly or bi-yearly recalibration fees. Most of the time, the recalibration fees run anywhere from 40 to 50% of the filter's cost. Here's a tip. When you purchase a liquid calibration filter, make sure you ask how much the recalibration fee is up front and how often you have to recalibrate. Also, to find out the recalibration lead time is helpful as well. As we mentioned earlier, liquid calibration standards are made from potentially dangerous chemicals, so you don't want to break one of these. Being that these are housed in coarse cuvettes means that they can break if mishandled, so extra care must be taken when using a liquid standard. Another tip when buying a liquid calibration standard is to make sure you get the Material Data Safety Sheet, or the MSDS. This way you know exactly what you're getting and how to handle any potential issues that may come up. When storing liquid filters, you have to make sure that they are stored in the place that is room temperature. The chemicals can freeze if stored in a cold place, or excessive heat can throw the filters off. Now let's move on to solid spectrophotometer calibration filters. Solid state calibration standards started being used much later than their liquid relatives. Many lab protocols were written before these standards were available and therefore these filters are not as popular as the liquid calibration standards. But let's go ahead and take a look at solid calibration standards and see why labs should make the jump to these more modern calibration filters. To start, solid spectrophotometer calibration filters can test for everything that liquid filters can test. This includes photometric accuracy, stray light, wavelength accuracy, and resolution. There are many advantages to using a solid state calibration standard and we'll go over them one by one. First, let's look at the construction of a solid calibration filter. Solid spectrophotometer calibration standards are a solid piece of variety of materials such as different thicknesses of neutral density glass, holmium oxide glass, didymium, and other materials. The block of glass is mounted in a black aluminum housing. The glass plate is surrounded by the housing on all sides. This design is quite robust, but of course you still have to handle these filters with care and be sure not to touch the optical surfaces with your bare hands. So remember what I said at the beginning when I was going to tell you in a big secret about special photometry calibration standards? Well, here it comes. For me, the most important advantage is that a solid standard does not have any recalibration fees. I know the manufacturers are going to get angry and say that this is not true, but this is 100% true. It's nice to have the extra income from the yearly or bi-yearly recalibration fees, but for a solid state filter, this is not required. So let's go to the experts at NAST and take a look at what they have to say about a solid state homium oxide glass wavelength filter. So here's what they say. Homium oxide glass has been used as a wavelength standard for over four decades. These standards have shown insignificant spectral variation from batch to batch and from one manufacturer to another. The National Institute of Standards and Technologies, NAST, has certified and recertified homium oxide glass samples for over four decades. Over this period of time, there has been no recorded instance of a spectral shift of the certified bands for any of the samples measured. Moreover, these samples are known to be robust and relatively insensitive to normal range of temperature and humidity. Based on the extensive experience that NAST has with this material and its long-term stability, NAST will no longer recommend the decertification of these standards. Here's a link to the full article. Now we have to keep in mind that the above statement is 100% true as long as the standard is cared for properly. This means wearing gloves when handling the standard, keeping the standard in the protective case when not in use, keeping the standard away from any kinds of dust or liquids, carefully inserting and removing the standard from a spectrophotometer. With just a little care, a solid spectrophotometer calibration standard will last you forever. The next benefit is also mentioned by NAST, and that is a solid material is not affected by temperature fluctuations. 
We often ship out solid calibration standards in the dead of the winter, which is well below freezing. And when the customer receives them, they are in 100% working condition. When shipping liquid standards in the winter, special packaging is needed to ensure the standards do not freeze and break. Companies will actually charge more money for the additional packaging. How crazy is that? For people who are worried about lab safety, there's nothing safer than getting a solid calibration filter. There are no dangerous chemicals to be concerned about, and it makes paperwork easier since you don't need an MSDS. Okay, so let's recap. The material liquid standards are made from our various chemicals such as homin perchlorate, potassium dichromate. The materials that solid standards are made from are glass plates of various materials such as homium oxide and didymium. Liquid standards test for photometric accuracy, wavelength accuracy, straight light, and resolution. Solid standards also test for photometric accuracy, wavelength accuracy, straight light, and resolution. Liquid standards that are housed in a 10 mm quartz cuvette. Solid standards are housed in a 10 mm metal housing. Liquid standards need an MSDS. Solid standards do not need an MSDS. Liquid standards do require recalibration. Solid standards do not require recalibration. Liquid standards have a one or two year recalibration period, whereas solid standards have no recalibration period. Thanks again for checking out the video. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below or send us an email to info at fireflyside.com. Thanks again and we'll see you next time.